Well, in announcing his proposed changes to the NSA surveillance program on Friday, President Obama said he wants to work with leaders on Capitol Hill. I will consult with the relevant committees in Congress to seek their views and then seek congressional authorization for the new program as needed. Now, that's a surprising statement from the president, considering what he said earlier this week before his first cabinet meeting of the year. We are not just going to be waiting for legislation in order to make sure uh, that we're providing Americans uh, the kind of help that they need. Uh, I've got a pen and I've got a phone. Uh, and I can use that pen to sign executive orders uh, and take executive actions and administrative actions. Okay, so will he or won't he work with Congress? Joining me now is Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell of Kentucky. Senator, good to have you back on the show. Glad to be with you. The president says at the first of the week he can do it on his own. Last of the week he says, no, I really want to work with Congress. Which president do you believe is telling us the truth? <laughs> Yeah, well, we get both versions uh, routinely. I, I think he'd be smart to work with Congress. Look, everybody's concerned about their privacy, but we're also concerned about avoiding another 9-11 attack. And a number of the techniques that we developed in the last 10 years have prevented those attacks. I think we can meet the balance between Americans' understandably high concern about their privacy and still uh, protecting us from another terrorist attack. He'd be smart, rather than uh, doing that all by himself, uh, to engage Congress. I think we all have the same goal here. Hey, you know, how do you, how do you square these two concerns: privacy on the one hand versus protecting the public from a terrorist attack on the other? There's also an article that you wrote this week in Politico, and you outlined some of the challenges that are being faced in the Senate, notably that uh, Harry Reid's heavy-hand approach to cutting off debate is really taken away the very intent of what our founders meant for the Senate. Can it be fixed? Yeah, it can be fixed. I mean, one person could, could fix it. If I were the majority leader of the Senate next year instead of Harry Reid, I could fix it, because what he's done, <laughs> Governor... <clears throat> There's a, a parliamentary technique available only to the majority leader, whoever that is, to prevent the minority, and for, the, for that matter, his own members, from getting amendments. To, to just show you how bad it's been in the Senate, uh, Republicans have had four roll call votes on amendments that they cared about since last July, in six months. <laughs> the Senate used to be a free-flowing place for both the minority and the majority, in which all people's ideas were considered. And ultimately, somehow, uh, the process worked, and it worked for over 200 years. So one person, the majority leader of the Senate, has uh, turned the Senate into a place where you can't get your amendments voted on. What that means is those of us uh, all across the country who represent people are not g being given an opportunity to present the ideas of the people from the states that we come from. Uh, it can change with just one move, and that's for the American people to elect a new majority, a Republican majority of the United States Senate. I promise that we will open up the amendment process. Well, you've certainly convinced our audience here, Senator, and, and by the way, I need to disclose to our, our television audience, uh, you know, I don't want anyone to be misled. I, I have endorsed you in your re-election bid because I'd like to see you as the majority leader instead of the minority leader. If you were in that role, I'm curious, would you reverse the policy of the nuclear option that was invoked by Harry Reid and the Democrats? Because that really did take away the voice of the minority, something that had been respected and traditionally upheld throughout all of American history. Yeah, what they did was to break the rules of the Senate in order to change the rules of the Senate. It's a big deal. Didn't get a lot of press, but a very big deal. This is entirely consistent with what the, uh, the president did a couple of years ago uh, when he decided we were not in session when we were in session and, and issued what was called a recess appointment. We had a hearing before the Supreme Court uh, just this week, Governor, and when even Elena Kagan and Sonia, Sonia Sotomayor are pounding the, 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 the government's lawyers, I think there's a good chance the United States Supreme Court, with a very broad uh, margin, is going to slap down the president's uh, attempt uh, to <laughs> declare <laughs> the 
what he, what he was doing, in effect, is saying that he got to decide when we were in session. I mean, even Elena Kagan wasn't buying that. So I think the president's going to be slapped down, and we're going to run the Senate next year with a new majority in a more open and respectful way of the process and still move America right of center. Senator, this week you've also taken some action to protect the coal industry. It's a big industry to Kentucky, but also to West Virginia and Virginia. There are many states where uh, coal is critical. Uh, what action are you taking to try to stop the EPA from what is nothing less than a very heavy-handed approach to destroy the coal industry in, in America? Yeah, it's tragic. I mean, we, we've got a, uh, a depression, not a recession, a depression in central Appalachia. We've lost 5,000 out of 18,000 coal, mine, uh, coal mining jobs in, in my state. For every coal mining job you lose, you lose three more. A depression created by this administration and the EPA. Uh, they're issuing a regulation, Governor, that uh, if it goes through, will guarantee that there will never be another coal-fired uh, uh, plant built in America. And that's 40% of our electricity. You know, coal keeps, uh, l keeps the lights on. Uh, what we're doing is implementing what's, what's called the congressional review process to try to overturn that regulation. I'm not optimistic, obviously, that the president would sign it if we can put it on his desk, but we're going to try. Uh, the only way to end this depression is to have a new president, a new administration, and I'm optimistic we're going to get that in three years. Well, I'm hoping, and I think a lot of other people are, that that will happen. Senator, great to have you here. Thank you very much for joining us today. It's a real pleasure. Thank you, Governor. I really appreciate it.